So Conrad, I had a very interesting opportunity. I was leaving a law firm and I noticed a little book in the bushes and I picked it up and it was titled Diary of Law Firm Marketing Director. And I thought maybe we would share a little passage from this diary today and talk about it. So I'm going to read the entry here. 10-18-2024. Dear Diary, the irony I face daily is that A, experienced attorneys, the ones making the most money in decisions for the firm, aka my budget, believe with good cause that the vast majority of high value cases and clients come from word of mouth referrals, which are based on the attorney's individual reputations, which are based largely on their actual work performance, not my marketing ingenuity. That's the first part of the entry. There's a second part that we're going to get to, but I want to pause there and get your thoughts, Conrad. Do you have empathy yeah, well for our dear legal marketing director? No. <laughs> None. Amazing. None. Amazing. Well, so... Okay, <laughs> why not? No, why but, not? But so, so there's a couple things. Um, the, one of the things that you and I have talked about regularly is that different marketing channels perform differently, period. So your conversion rates from referrals should be higher. Probably the value of the cases, especially coming from other attorneys, should be higher. So you're not wrong in suggesting that this is a focus of driving as much value as you can for the law firm. And bluntly, <clears throat> and you and I have talked about this, if you can build a law firm that meets your objectives through nothing but referrals, do it. We've already talked about this. We, we, I think two episodes ago, we talked about the highest ROIs to slash everything other than referrals. The problem is, you, there is a fi that, that is a very small portion of the market. A very, and, and if that's enough well, of that the market for you, Merry Christmas. That's great. Do it. So that's the point of this first part. Yeah. Is that there, the conclusion is, their they're, they're, they're data, their data says most of our cases, good cases and clients come from word of mouth referrals. And they great. also say, hold on. Then they also say, we're, uh, we're going to not have budget on non-acquisition. Okay and are on non-brand acquisition. And on top of that, they have growth objectives. Okay, well, that's the problem. That's the problem <laughs> There's right there. the problem. But, but hold on, I, I, like the reason I said I, don't, I have no empathy for our uh, writer here is there's a lot that you can do tactically to encourage referrals. And most law firms fail on this. As you were reading this out, like I would extend the job of the marketing director it, to, to the law firm owner listening to this. The job of your marketing director, if you just position themselves them outside of encouraging referrals, that is epically stupid because epically we know bad. epically bad, much bad. Um, much bad. Much bad. Huge we, mistake. We know. It's, a, it's a total misalignment of it is. Your, it is. Go ahead. Keep going. It, so, so as you were just reading this thing, I, 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 I scribbled in my notes some of the things that your law firm should be doing, your marketing director should be doing to encourage and support those referrals. So there is the obvious retargeting and ensuring that your own database constantly sees your brand, right? And, and, and most law firms forget about this. If you are running a solid CRM, you can run a newsletter, to this group. And we've seen some amazing newsletters. Christopher Early has started doing this extremely effectively. There's plenty of lawyers sending out kind of industry. I get, I get his emails. It's, they're great. Go sign they're up for Christopher Early's emails. They're great. So if you want a good example of someone doing this well, go look at his stuff. Um, if you're really running this well and you have birthday information, which you can grab off of LinkedIn or Facebook by and large for everyone in your in your database, I mean, you probably get a 40% hit rate. Go send out those, those birthday cards. 
Um, you should absolutely have your marketing director, and we, you and I have talked about this before, they should be sending out personalized gifts to those referrers. Yeah, you might you might exchange money, but like go send out that personalized gift. We, we showed the example of uh, Hunter Garnett, who sent me the personalized Benchmade knife. Um, those types of things stick with you forever. So that's a really obvious thing. And the, and, the, and the final, and there's probably more, but the final thing that I scribbled down is one of the best things, and you can put this on the marketing director's back, is to make sure that those cases that get referred to you, you keep the referrer up to speed with how those matters are doing, right? And that is a great way to show that you care, show that you over communicate, and show that you're doing a great job for those referrals so those keep coming. So I reject the notion that your marketing director's job should should not include driving everything everything you can do to drive more of those referrals. Totally, those are, that was awesome. Great examples. Um, I'm going to take a different approach because I I think that this marketing director would love to do all those things. Maybe even is doing all those things. Um, but the law firm doesn't see it as his participating in that, right? Because look what they're saying. Word of mouth referrals, which are based on the attorney's individual reputations, which are based largely on their actual work performance, not my marketing ingenuity. It's like, is that because you're not getting credit for those things or you're not doing them? And 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 is that not part of your job description, right? Does, is the firm, you know, if, if the firm is like, referrals are free, man. Referrals don't referrals are free. We just do work. We gotta do, we gotta spend time and money to do work that we have to do anyway. And then we get referrals. If that's the mindset, you know, th- she's not getting credit for any th- any of that stuff. They're going to be like, we were getting those referrals anyway. And then, and I think that's your point is you can demonstrate that you can increase the number of referrals. But again, it, that's why you can't you, the the CMO or the marketing director's role has to be aligned with the right growth plan and metrics all in. You can't you can't be like you're going to be the market, you know, are you are you just a direct response performance marketer? Is that what your job is? So you 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 brought up one part of this that I forgot to pounce on. Pounce. That I think is is a is a fallacious perception. And it is reputations which are based largely on their actual work performance. Right. Bullshit. There you go. You are completely wrong about this. Exactly. Thank you. So let me move Thank outside you. of legal. I use this all the time. I've I've had five knee surgeries, so I am fairly well versed in knee surgeries. I have Re- no repeat idea. customer. Repeat customer number. You're six on the on loyalty the program. You got time. the card. You're totally. your card punched. Exactly. You get a free one. What do you get a free one after ten? I- <laughs> but my point here is. I have no idea if the surgeon did a good job. Like my right knee hurts, but I can walk. Is that a good outcome or a bad That's good. outcome? I don't, That's good. You I can, don't know. Yeah, you can still walk, man. I can walk. Still walk. Right? Good job. So, so I think you need to move this. And, and this is a really important thing. You need to move this. We do a good job and therefore we have a good reputation and therefore we get a lot of referrals. That is not the case. You get a lot of good referrals, to use my medical example, because you have great bedside manner right? You keep people up to speed. You speak in their language. You have empathy. You give a damn. Um, being good at your job, in many cases, you may do an amazing job and and the client at the end will not even know that it was a great outcome. That's so most of the time they that, don't know. You know, and look, if, most this is, of the if time. you're talking, because, uh, you know, pretty much every legal context is going to be that. I, you know, we talk a lot about the PI side of things. They don't, you know, they don't know. You know, everybody's got million dollar verdicts on their websites. Everybody's got, you know, best lawyer and super lawyer. But whatever, if you, you can deliver a great, you know, legal representation. And to Conrad's point, if your service stinks, regardless, I mean, with some exceptions, right? Like, you know, because these guys will be like, well, you know, if I got, if I, if I hand my check for a million dollars, they don't care about my bedside manner. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's one client. <laughs> but think about all the ones where you've had to, you have to have difficult conversations about settling, and then there's the one. And how about all the people that you talk to on the phone that you won't even take their case? And then there's all the ones that you know 
you're working the case, but you're not responding to them and they're going online and leaving a negative review about like, I haven't heard from this firm in like three months. Yeah. So, so dear marketing director, get in, get your job is to also think about delivering great bedside manner for the matters in which you are engaged in order to continue the referrals. And to educate the lawyers that referrals don't just happen because you're a great lawyer and that they're not free. We need, you should be deploying resources against these things to increase referrals and to increase client, client experience and potential client experience. All right, back to our diary. So I'm going back here, flipped into the page well, here. Oh, hey, Key, oh, is this a fictional yeah. diary or t- is, is there a name on this? No, there's a name this- on this diary. Okay. Um, but we, it's not our, we think maybe it's not our uh, freedom to. Well, well, where, where did you really name. find this question? I, I, I'm trying I to draw out this. A, is, it's a, it's a, this is not Key very... and Connor making stuff up. No, it was, no, I'm, we'll t- let's tell the whole story here. Sure. We tell weren't even planning on talking about this today. We had to scrap our article, our segment, but then this came through and it was like, this is this, much better. This, it was a response. It was a LinkedIn comment. And this, you know, you got to give it up to LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn does spark some good conversations when you're like dealing yep. with real people. Anyway, it's a response to a, a comment. And, you know, it just, the time that it came in, like, and we really felt it. We really felt this, um, post because this is, you're not alone out there. Let me tell you, talking to a lot of lawyers and a lot of marketing directors, you are not alone. Um, the issues about investing in referrals and, and really looking at the full picture of how referrals and word of mouth works. Um, and as we get into this second part of this question, you know, the expectations around performance marketing and then, well, Let's just back, get back to the uh, the uh, diary entry. So here we go. And yet B, I'm largely tasked with bringing in marketing originated business, mostly 95 plus percent via search. While that constitutes about a third of the firm's revenue, they'd like it to be closer to half. This is mainly to feed work to newer attorneys who haven't built up their reputations enough to rely on those direct referrals. Oh, those free direct referrals. Those lawyers have been doing it forever, just generating those referrals, just doing good work. Just doing um, good work. Me, sorry, like, I gotta finish that. I gotta finish the entry. I got excited there. That wasn't in the <laughs> entry. That was, that was ad-libbed. The irony is that digital marketing gets very little respect among the senior attorneys deciding my budget, salary, etc. Is this as ironic as I think it is, or should I be looking at it differently? <laughs> wow, welcome to our world, dude. Digital marketing gets uh, very it's little so respect. Good. With, it's Guy so and I have good. had a career getting slapped around by you guys <laughs> with, with no respect. We get the fishtail of, of your scorn every single day. The only thing more <laughs> lowly than the direct the in-house director is the agency marketer. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, okay. Uh, so I feel like we should be having parse, this over let's a beer. Let's parse it. Okay. Yeah. This right, is right. totally. This is uh, this is agency therapy, aka <laughs> dear diary marketing. Okay. Director. We may have just lost all of our listeners, but um, here's what I pulled out of this. No, tell them. Tell them what's going on here. There's there's, there's want... a big picture and a small picture. They go ahead. The, you, your your firm wants to grow, so half of their business is coming from your digital marketing efforts. Great. Okay. So that means that you need to continue playing this game. And putting resources to it and and the ah, referrals. Ah, putting resources to it, Conrad. Yes. You forgot about the this little respect and budget. I, I, and the, the respect, yeah. Okay, so, so, so this- They don't want to put resources into it. They want it to well, perform then, better no, with no, the existing great. budget. <laughs> so if you want to get from, from one third to 50%, you're talking about a 17% increase- in your revenue without spending any more money, which is just dumb. Uh, so don't don't like that. That's on you, dear law firm owner. Um, but I think also hidden in here, ye, is a problem for the marketer, and it is a problem from the perspective of based on the perspective of the law firm owner. 
The, the, this, this person says 95% of their marketing originated business is from search. That's what, that's is, what got me too. There are two problems. There's probably more than two problems on that. The, 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 the biggest problem that I see here is that the law firm is looking at this from a direct response perspective. Yep, exactly. And probably, and, and probably like last touch. It's last touch attribution, right? Like I can see this. It's the concept that you have that this, this call came in from Mary because of, and let me use the most frequently misused example, Google business profile. Right. So you can track that this this lead, Mary, this even this client, if your tracking is really good, if you're only using last touch, they may have come in from your Google business profile, but they did that. They got to your Google business profile for other reasons. And so I, I, I suspect this is a simplistic attribution model client. And I suspect that the mindset of the owners is only around direct response where we are going to invest in generating this specific client. That's right. On top of that, search should not be 95% of your digital marketing business. That is bonkers. Um, you, at the very least, you need to break this out into paid, local, and organic. Um, that, that still falls under the search category. But th th there's no way. Now, I don't have a single client, and I run a digital marketing business, where search represents 95% of their, what, the, what did they say? marketing originated business that that would that is a mistake sorry go ahead Guy. uh no i'm with you on those i think the uh you know the, the first thing to jump out at me is is like you better start diversifying like if in a, and yep. again the, the question is is like are the law firm to your point are the law firm owners only looking at this like you're responsible for non-brand organic search that converts into business that's the only thing we're giving you credit for or we're giving you credit for you know, uh, search, click, call Google ads clients. Right. 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 Um, you know, maybe, and probably some, hopefully some LSAs, I think if they're smart, but you know, how I feel about LSAs. Um, again, that's all search. So you're still, you're way too beholden to search, but are you getting credit for these other ways of marketing? Um, but this, to me, like, that's the point. This is going to require a mindset shift by the firm, by the firm owners that like we got to look at marketing a totally different way. Like we got to totally we got to get out of this um old fashioned direct response. You know, hey, this side of the house is do great work, we get referrals and this side of the house is you're only getting credit for non-brand direct response from search. Like, come on. Um 100%. and by the way, by the way, if you're going to put those parameters in, you better be ready to fund it. You better be ready to spend some serious money. Yeah, I mean, but that's I, the so, problem. They're like, you're only getting credit for search. We're going to be all in on search. That's all you get credit for, and zero percent increase in your budget. Go convert well, more. I, yeah. So, so <laughs> I, you know, I said a seventeen percent increase in 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 the in the revenue uh, without an increased budget. That that you're really talking about a fifty percent increase in the effectiveness of your digital marketing efforts. Without increasing the budget, that's limited just, to non-brand search. Yeah, el stupido. So um, not cool, not cool. So and, and to, uh, to the point, to the to again to the empathy, is this as ironic as I think it is, or should I be looking at it differently? Is this as ironic as you think it is? Yes. Also, Guy and Connor have no empathy for you. <laughs> well, I, um, I have empathy because we talk to this marketing director's boss all the time, and we run into it a lot. Not, oh, not you're, this specific, you're, you're not this specific philosophically. Yeah, right. I was going to be philosophical. like, whoa, <laughs> careful, dude. No, no. He is burning bridges on the pod no. in real time. <laughs> no, philosophically, yeah. you talk to this lawyer all the time, right? Um, you know, and, and until you until you shift that mindset, like your, your stuff's just not going to work as well. It works better when it's all working integrated. When you're thinking, oh. when you're all thinking about this, this is from the same vantage point and you're willing to actually properly resource it. But I, I think inherent in this is from the, the original point, like the referrals are going to cost less to acquire. Yes. They're Absolutely. going to cost less well, to acquire. It depends. It depends. It depends. So like mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're thinking about the former client word of mouth, um, referral okay. in the community. That's fair. 
that's that's, fair. that's free, right? That's free. You can't. I mean, like, that's the point that they're making. They're saying we just do good work and we're going to get these community referrals, and you will. That and you should. The issue is the growth. That's, that's the right. challenge. Like that's if right. you want to grow, you have to invest. And and, and, and so you can invest in referrals. Yeah. Re- invest in referrals. Mathematically, you need to understand, dear law firm owner, that the growth clients are going to cost more to acquire than the static referral clients. You need to incremental cost that goes up and be as you okay take over more market. That. Right. That's right. And if because different parts of the market cost different amounts to acquire, and you need to be okay with that. Um, and if you're not okay with that, if you just want to live in that, I wish everything was just as cheap to buy as, to generate as my referral business. That is fantastic. You do not have a growth oriented law firm. You just don't, and that's which that's is right. fine. But um, right. stop shellacking your marketing director with "I want you to double the effectiveness of digital marketing without changing the right. budget." Or, or it'd be like, "Look, we're forget non brand direct response. I'm going to focus all my time generating. You know, you guys talk about how valuable these word of mouth referrals are." Let me spend my time focusing on increasing the number of word of mouth referrals we get because it's not just you guys doing a good job. That's right. I and I would do that. I mean, we're we're in Q4 right now. This is a great conversation to have. Great annual you'll have conversation. A, you'll have a mm-hmm. benchmark of how many referrals we got in 2024 and give me 20% of the budget to put towards doubling. Go double go increase your referral business by 50% by spending money on it. Instead of just thinking you're going to generate that from good work. Exactly. And and do all the things that Conrad said at the outside of the episode. He gave gave you a bunch of ideas. So if you need ideas, click rewind.